welcome you all in this our lecture series program today we are going to talk about neuro linguistics this topic is from the contents and introduction to linguistics semester 2 we are going to talk about the following points as definitions these definitions are taken from the recommended books for the students of linguistics historical view of neuro linguistics what is the history of neuro linguistics we are going to talk about anatomy of human brain for understanding how brain controls while we speak language language and brain as a whole we are going to talk about so these are some of the outlines we are going to discuss today in this our lecture so without a further go let's talk about our today's topic here we are going to talk about the definition from the book the study of language by george yule and according to this book the study of relationship between language and the brain is called neurolinguistics so when we talk about neurolinguistics we are concerned with brain and language here we are talking about brain because we are going to learn the physical uh, properties of brain how it controls uh while we speak language or how uh, it is uh, used while we uh, talk about language so this is all about when we talk about neurolinguistics here are other definitions neurolinguistics is the study of the neural mechanisms in the human brain that controls the comprehension production and acquisition of language so when we talk about neurolinguistics we are talking about neural mechanism uh of human brain uh how it control while we uh, comprehend produce or acquire a language neuro linguistics is a branch of linguistics dealing mainly with biological basis of the relationship of human language and brain so when we are concerned with the physical uh entity of brain we are uh, actually talking about the biological basis of uh language here we are going to talk about historical view of neuro linguistics Neuro linguistics is historically rooted in the development in the 19th century of aphasiology the study of linguistic deficits aphasia occurring as a result of brain damage so this is study uh, neuro linguistics is started when some of the researchers they uh, studied about the deficit of linguistic that is aphasia uh, it was due to the brain damage and that was the beginning of neuro linguistics here is the man paul broca one of the first people to draw a connection between a particular brain area and language processing was paul broca a french surgeon who conducted autopsies on numerous individuals who had speaking deficiencies and found that most of them had brain damage on the left frontal lobe अगर हम पाउल ब्रोका की बात करें तो ये वो पहले बंदे हैं जिसने ब्रेन एरिया और लैंग्वेज प्रोसेसिंग की स्टडी की कि कौन से ब्रेन के एरिया जो है वो हम जब लैंग्वेज का इस्तेमाल कर रहे होते हैं तो यूज होते हैं और ये फ्रेंच सर्जन थे ये बहुत सारे जो है वो पोस्टमार्टम्स करते थे उन बंदों का कि जिनको स्पीकिंग डेफिशंसीज होती थी और उसमें जो है वो इन्होंने देखा कि बहुत सारे लोगों को ब्रेन डैमेज था उनको जो है लेफ्ट फ्रंट लॉब में जो है वो इंजरी थी तो यहां से जो है वो न्यूरो की शुरुआत होती है ब्रोकाज रिसर्च हैज बीन डिस्क्राइब्ड एज एपक मेकिंग एंड पिवेटल टू द फील्ड ऑफ न्यूरो लिंग्विस्टिक्स एंड कॉग्नेटिव साइंस सो व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट ब्रोकाज रिसर्च हिज रिसर्च मेड अ वे फॉर न्यूरो लिंग्विस्टिक्स एंड कॉग्नेटिव साइंस the work of broca and uh, wernick established the field of aphasiology and the idea that language can be studied through examining physical characteristics of the brain to ye wo do researchers hain broca and wernick ki jinhone jo hai wo language ke upar study ki aur unhone ye kaha ki physical jo hai wo characteristics dekhe ja sakte hain unko examine kiya ja sakta hai जबकि हम बात करते हैं कि लैंग्वेज की अगर कोई डेफिशिएंसीज हैं तो यानी अगर लैंग्वेज की डेफिशिएंसीज जो है वो कोई हैं तो जाहिर सी बात है अकॉर्डिंग टू देम कि वो किसी फिजिकल इंजरी की वजह से या डैमेज की वजह से हो सकते हैं दिस वाज ऑल अबाउट आर दैट वर्क गिवन बाय ब्रोका एंड वर्निक 
The coining of the term neurolinguistics has been attributed to Harry Whitaker, who founded the Journal of Neurolinguistics in 1985. So when we are talking about neurolinguistics, the word neurolinguistics, it was coined by Harry Whitaker in 1985 uh, in a journal. Here we are going to talk about anatomy of human brain. The brain is composed of the cerebrum, cerebellum, and brain stem, as it is there into figure one. This uh, figure is taken from myfieldclinic.com. And according to this figure, you see brain has three parts, cerebrum, cerebellum, and brain stem. And these are the parts involved uh, while we speak a language. So let's talk about anatomy of human brain. Cerebrum, at the very first, we are going to talk. Cerebrum is the largest part of the brain and is composed of right and left hemisphere. So when we talk about cerebrum, it is actually the largest part and it is composed are divided into two parts, our two hemispheres. It performs higher functions like interpreting, touching, vision and hearing, as well as speech, reasoning, emotions, learning and fine control of movement. So these are some of the functions played by cerebrum. Here we are going to talk about cerebellum. Cerebellum is located under the cerebrum. Its function is to coordinate muscle movements, maintain posture and balance. This is the function of cerebellum. When we talk about brain stream, brain stream acts as relay center connecting the cerebrum and cerebellum to the spinal cord. So it, this exists nearby spinal cord and this actually connects uh, cerebrum and cerebellum. It performs many automatic functions such as breathing, heart rate, body temperature, wet and sleep cycles, digestion, sneezing, coughing, vomiting and swelling. So in this way, these are some of the functions played by brainstem. Here, once again, we are going to talk about cerebellum. And as we uh, have divided uh, it into two halves, that is right and left brain. The cerebrum is divided into two halves, the right and the left hemisphere. Each hemisphere controls the opposite side of the body. If a stroke occurs on the right side of the brain, your left arm or leg may be weak or paralyzed. So this is uh, how we are going to talk about these two halves that they control the opposite side of the body. In general, the left hemisphere of the brain is responsible for language and speech. That is called the dominant hemisphere. As we already have talked about, that left hemisphere is the part if we feel there is some deficiency of language in someone else. So it is just because of the damage of the left hemisphere. Here we are going to talk about language and brain. These notes are taken from the book, The Study of Language by George Yu. These are some of the areas which are involved or controlled language. Number one, here you see this area is called Broca's area or anterior speech cortex. This area is called posterior speech cortex. These nerves are called arcuate fasciculus. And this part is called motor cortex. So these are some of the areas which are involved in our controlling language. Here we are going to talk about Broca's area our interior speech cortex. As it is there, we could see into this picture, Broca's area, anterior speech cortex. Paul Broca, a French surgeon, as we already have talked about, reported in 1860s, the damage to this specific part of the brain was related to extreme difficulty in producing speech. So those people who were feeling uh, speech difficulty, they are having damage to this part, according to Paul Broca in 1860s. 
it was noted that damage to corresponding area on the right hemisphere had no such effect this finding was first used to argue that language ability must be located in the left hemisphere and since then has been treated as an indication that broca's area is crucially involved in the production of his speech so when we are talking about that uh, left hemisphere has been damaged um in the matter of language deficiency and it was uh, uh, researched by paul broca here when we talk about posterior speech cortex or vernix area this is the area we call it posterior speech cortex or vernix area karl vernick was a german doctor who in the 18 70s a report that damage to this part of the brain was found among patients who had a speech comprehension difficulties this finding confirmed the left hemisphere location of language ability and led to the view that vernix area is part of the brain crucially involved in the understanding of his speech so according to vernix this is the part of the brain uh, is involved in a speech deficiency are while someone who is facing speech problems here is motor cortex we already have talked about this is the area and secondly we are talking about uh, arcuate fasciculus number one motor cortex an area that generally controls movement of muscles for moving hands feet arms so motor cortex is the area which controls these all physical movements evidence that this area is involved in the physical articulation of his speech comes from work reported in 1950s so when we talk about physical articulation this part is also involved arcuate fasciculus a bundle of nerve fibers called the arcuate fasciculus this was also one of the vernix discoveries and is now known to form crucial connection between vernix and broca's area so these are some of the fibers uh, which are called arcuate fasciculus and these are involved to make connection between uh, broca's area and vernix area here we are going to talk about aphasia what is aphasia those people suffer from different types of language disorders generally described as aphasia aphasia is defined as an impairment of language function due to localized brain damage that leads to difficulty in understanding and or producing linguistic forms so when we are talking about aphasia aphasia is actually an impairment of language function and it is due to brain damage the most common cause of aphasia is a stroke when a blood vessel in the brain is blocked or burst though traumatic head injuries from violence or an accident may have similar effects those effects can range from mild to severe reduction in the ability to use language so when we talk about aphasia it is just because uh, uh, of the brain damage or a brain stroke or traumatic or head injuries these are some of the reasons of aphasia broca's aphasia here there are types of aphasia number one broca's aphasia the serious language disorder known as broca's aphasia also called motor aphasia is characterized by a substantially reduced amount of speech distorted articulation and slow often effortful speech so when we talk about uh, broca's area we are going to uh, call it motor aphasia isko hum motor aphasia bhi keh sakte hain aur ye jo hai wo uh, distorted speech yani uh, jo hai wo ruk ruk ke bolna कोई जो है या हकला के बोले या आहिस्ता बोले या इस तरह से बोले कि बहुत ज्यादा कोई एफर्ट लगती हो बोलने में तो उसको हम ब्रोकाज अफेजिया कह सकते हैं देर इज एन अदर अफेजिया वी कॉल इट वार्नक्स अफेजिया द टाइप ऑफ लैंग्वेज डिसऑर्डर दैट रिजल्ट इन डिफिकल्टीज इन ऑडिटरी कॉम्प्रीहेंशन इज समाइम्स कॉल्ड सेंसरी अफेजिया सो दिस इज एक्चुअली लैंग्वेज डिसऑर्डर एंड इट इज Uh, it could have been the difficulty of uh, listening or comprehension and that is also called sensory aphasia number 3 conduction aphasia 
Individuals suffering from this order sometimes mispronounce words, but typically do not have articulation problems. They are fluent, but may have disrupted rhythm because of pauses and hesitation. Conduction of aphasia, जो है वो जो है किसी घबराहट की वजह से या poses की वजह से rhythm के टूटने की वजह से हो सकता है और बहुत सारे जो है वो words को mispronounce करते हैं इस तरह के disorder को जो है वो conduction aphasia कहा जाता है Here we are going to talk about slips of tongue. This is one of the orders, and slips of this type are sometimes called spoonerisms. After William Spooner, an Anglican clergyman at Oxford University who was renowned for his tongue slips, although the slips are mostly treated as errors of articulation, it has been suggested that they may result from slips of the brain, as it tries to organize linguistic messages. so slips of tongue is actually uh, due to slips of the brain these are the notes uh, taken from the book the study of language by george jule and this is one of the recommended books for the students of linguistics thanks for attention thank you very much hopefully this could have been very helping for all of you